Good morning. I'm Michael Carey, the pastor of Church in the Wild. We've been reading through Mark's Gospel and rediscovering the incredible news that with Jesus coming to earth, he could announce the kingdom of God is at hand. And this kingdom is available to people as they welcome the grace and power of Jesus in their lives. It um, involves belief. He said, repent and believe. And by repentance, um, he really meant a personal transformation uh, rather than simply being sorry about getting caught doing something bad. And this transformation of heart and mind happens within, yet it also happens in community. It's individual, but it's not individualistic. It's communal. In fact, the first thing Jesus did is to was to begin to create a kingdom community. He called ordinary people to be his disciples, and their growth personally together became a manifestation for people to see, for people to see communities living according to the principles of God's kingdom, God's reign. That's the visible demonstration. Jesus clarified this in Luke chapter 17 when he said, you know, some will say um, there's the kingdom or here's the kingdom because, of course, in that time they were expecting more of a political revolution. And Jesus said, no, the kingdom of God is within you. And more, more accurately, the translations say, is in the midst of you. So it's in the community as people follow Jesus together that we see the kingdom of God becoming reality on earth. Last week, we, we revisited the parable of the soils, that Jesus making the analogy that the conditions of people's hearts was similar in a way to the different types of soil. And as a, as a farmer might throw lots of seed out, God is throwing the message of the gospel and how people receive the gospel is sort of like the different kinds of soil. Some um, don't, aren't receptive to the seed and others um, are sort of receptive and some types of soil are very receptive. And, and, and that parable really emphasized that the condition of the heart has a lot to do with whether and how the kingdom of God prospers. Today we're, we're reading a shorter, more simpler set of parables and just really good news about the kingdom. So we're starting with chapter 4, verse 26. Jesus also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, such, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. And, and so um, this, these simple parables um, have incredible treasure to offer us. First of all, the kingdom of God is like little seats, tiny seats. And the parable reminds us that the seeds grow all by themselves. They grow on their own. They grow when the farmer is asleep. And the farmer doesn't know how this happens. And in, in Jesus' time, they did not have microscopes. They didn't have the ability to know exactly what was going on inside of a seed. The seed appeared dead, and yet it was the vessel of incredible life potential. Now, last week, I had the opportunity to look with the kids at the garden, at the dock garden, uh, where I'm one of the volunteers and work with his kids kids in the after school program and we were really taking delight in seeing the little seedlings that had sprouted from the collard seeds we had planted and if I can manage this just a reminder in seeing these collard seeds 
you know, how inert, how lifeless, how small these little seeds are. And yet collard plants get, get pretty big and, and we, um, we harvest from collards, you know, for over six months, taking leaf, but bundles of leaves off those collards and boiling them and making a lot of our neighbors happy. And of course, some types of seeds grow huge plants, and and Jesus spoke of the mustard seed, which uh, which in their time was what they considered the smallest of all seeds, and yet the mustard seeds grew large enough to to create big, um, you know, big. They were like br brushy things and shrub or big shrubs, and took over, uh, kind of like kudzu in the south. I've seen the 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 um, fields of mustard seeds, and they're in their yellow blossoms and and birds of course take shelter in the shade as jesus pointed out and and the mystery of this uh, the kids um, took such joy in seeing these little seedlings that came up from the collards they had planted i i i, I watched their faces as i explained to them that 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 the little embryo in the seed wasn't dead it was just it was latent and waiting for water and the warmth of the sun and that the Lord had programmed these seeds to sprout forth with life under the conditions of warmth and water and that's what we were seeing the parable simple as it is reminds us of a profound truth that the growth of the kingdom is not up to us it's not up to us now there are things that we can do efforts we make that can have a huge impact on helping to prepare the soil of our hearts for receiving the seeds. I mean, uh, we can read self-help books to help get the big rocks out of our hearts, you know. Um, we, we can go to counseling if necessary to get those big rocks out of our hearts and keep growth from happening. We can, we can and should embrace disciplines that um, create opportunity for the growth inside of us to prosper. Church in the Wild, we really celebrate small discipleship groups where there's personal accountability and we can help each other grow together. But all those things that we do, it's not what causes the kingdom of God to grow in our hearts and, and be manifested in our lives. Those, um, those are ways we help prepare our soil, our, our, our dirt, to work, how we work our dirt so that our hearts are receptive. And so, Let's just celebrate this morning the mystery of how the message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, you know, creates a, a, the infinite capacity of God's grace to be at work within us and the incredible power of the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit within us, helping us become um, people who um, are able to, to be much more like Jesus and much more of what the Father intended when he created us. We, um, we remember that in Galatians, Paul wrote about the fruit of the Spirit. I, I'm not sure I remember all nine qualities, but I, I relish Galatians 5.22, where, where Paul wrote the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. Maybe I got all nine. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's incredible that those qualities are manifested in our lives as as the seed of the gospel, which is beyond us. We, we can't conjure that up. It has a life of its own within us. And yes, our dirt preparation um, does enhance the yield. And that's why we embrace disciplines. That's why we might go to counseling. That's why we join accountability groups. The other part of the parable that such good news, or the second parable, is that the emphasis on little seeds becoming big plants is, uh, is a reminder we should never underestimate the impact of, of what God does in our little lives and the, the, the way people receive the message of the gospel through our lives or for, through our lives without us having to sell people on Jesus. That we should never underestimate that. One way to say that is to um, remember that 
the kingdom of God is, has exponential power. It, it, it multiplies. It's not linear growth, it's exponential growth. Because, see, with, with, with seeds come, um, with, with fruit come seeds. And I, we, you know, Lynn and I have a plaque on our wall in our house, and it says, um, it, it says, anyone can count the seeds in an apple, but only God can count the apples in a seed. And so, and so, as God brings love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, all those things into our hearts by the incredible, amazing growth of the gospel, the message of grace, the presence of the actual Holy Spirit of God. That love, peace, joy, kindness, patience doesn't just become a blessing to those around us as, as we are more like Jesus. Within the love, the peace, joy, patience are the explanations of why that's been happening. That's the seeds of the gospel because with the fruit come seeds and with the seed becomes the possibility that that seed falls into other people's hearts as we give a simple explanations as without bragging or without um, trying to sell people we simply share what Jesus has done in our lives and and that has far more impact than simply being kind or being loving to them we're giving them the capacity for exponential kingdom growth this is what Paul celebrated when he, when he wrote to the Colossians and said, all over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you since the days you heard it and understood God's grace and all its truth. The gospel thrived in the ancient world as people received the seeds of the kingdom, experienced personal transformation in community, as that love and all those other kingdom qualities were manifested in a harsh world. And with the sharing of the love came the sharing of the message. That message fell into other people's hearts. And in many cases, depending on the quality of the soil, it could take root and grow. And that's the way the message of the kingdom will continue to prosper in our world as we bear witness to what Jesus has done in us and for us.